Now when I spoke about permutations, I gave you an idea what permutations are and what their arrangements are all about. Combination is all about one simple word. It's about selection. More than this word selection, there's another catch to it. Combinations is basically permutation without intra arrangement. I'll tell you what this means. Without intra arrangement. Okay. Now, when I say something like this, let's say let's let's take an example. Let's say I have A B C D E F as a string. Okay. Let's say I want to say that select A B C. Is just gonna select A B C. Then I say permute A B C. Then it will give you those six strings A B C A C B whatever those six strings that you have. Okay. Only if I say permute those six six strings, then only it will do it. So what does combination do? It just selects. So A B C is going to be A B C. Okay. You don't count A B C separately as B A C C B A S B A uh, B C A etc etc in combinations. In combination, if I say select three people, it's just going to select three people. So you can make out a difference between combination and permutation that way. When all when do you have combinations? When I say that, let's say I have a group of eleven students. Okay, and I say I want to select three students. So I want to select three out of eleven. In this case, I'll use combination because when I select three, let's say I select these three guys, first benchers. Okay, I select these three. Okay, when I select these three, I will not say that I selected him, her, and him is one of them. Then I'll not say that this guy, this guy, this, this lady, and this guy is another one. Okay, once I say selected, what's your name by the way? Rohit. What's your name? Rutika. Rutika. when i so i have r k and v okay so i'll say my selection is r k v i will not count it one more time saying that k r v is also a selection because r k v is anyway r k v okay so in selection it just counts once however in arrangement it counts all the ways to arrange let's say i want to give them rankings in the order of their performance and aptitude so i can give them rankings in this manner r k v r v k KVR, KRV, VRK, VKR. Okay. So when it comes to giving ranks, six ways possible. Comes to selecting only one way possible. So basically, what does combination do? It removes the effect of the arrangement of permutation. Okay. That is why when you say NCR, it is going to be NPR divided by R factor. I'll explain this to you. Don't don't worry about the letters, okay? I'll explain this to you exactly what it means. When I say seven C three, my job is to select three people or three things out of seven. Just select them. Don't permute them. Just select them. So what I'll do is I'll first permute them. This is the permutation side of it, okay? What is seven? I'll, I'll, before I go to seven C three, I'll go to seven P three. What is seven P three? Seven fact, fact by four fact, right? Seven fact is what selecting all, but I don't want all. I'm permuting all, sorry, but I don't want all. I want how many? I want only three. So I'll remove the four. That's why I removed the four. What combination will do for you is, it will again remove the three people's permutation that you do. The three things that you selected, you can permute in six manners, right? Six ways, three factorial ways. Combination will remove that too. And if this is valid. This becomes seven C three, so combination is basically counting a string only once, not counting its arrangements or the patterns of it. Okay, just just count it once. That's it. Okay, so what does combination do? It removes the effect of arrangements from permutation. Okay, so it's just selection, plain selection. So if I say I select two friends of mine A B, I'll say I've selected these two guys for going out tonight. Okay, A and B. I will not say yesterday I went with A and B. Yesterday I also went with B and A. No. Okay, the same thing. You understand that? That is called combination. Okay, very 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 powerful tool. Why? Because it removes the arrangements of permutation. Now when it removes the arrangement of permutation like this, okay, it becomes a splendid tool. Okay, I'll tell you how and why. Okay, combination is brilliant that way. Okay, so let's first understand how do you calculate combination. For example, seven C two, you will not go all the way permuting it and then removing it. 
okay this is the ideal way of the formula way is this but we will not do it this way i'm sure you've learned this how do you do 7c2 7 into 6 upon 2 into 1 that's going to be 21 okay so it's going to be 63 6 into 5 into 4 upon 3 into 2 into 1 simple logic you start with this number and write because it's 3 here write 3 numbers in descending order then start with this number in the denominator and write it till 1 okay 3 to cancel 6 and you get 20 okay what is 9c2 9 into 8 upon 2 slowly and steadily stop writing 1 okay 36 you understand that you gotta know these numbers a little orally, like a little, little by heart. I mean, mentally, you can just calculate quickly. If you don't want to by heart, just mentally calculate. Okay, you know how it works. Descending and dividing. Okay, yeah. So, <coughs> let's talk. <coughs> sorry, let's talk about the application of combinations. Okay, one of the most strongest application, I'd say, one of the strongest application is the application of combination table. Okay, this can solve a lot of questions for you, by the way. You'll have a five set over here, five five questions out here straight away. Okay, I'll, I'll explain combination tables. What it means? Combination table is basically collecting all the combinations of every possible number. Okay, so for that matter, let's make a combination table for six. So I'll start with, or let's say something like, okay, let's make it for seven. I'll start with seven C zero. What do you mean by seven C zero? Selecting nobody. There is always one way of selecting nobody. I saw seven people. I didn't like anybody. So I say let it be, I don't want to select. So there's one way of doing that. 7C1 is selecting one out of seven. I have seven possibil possibilities out there because I'm choosing one out of seven. So if I have seven people in front of me, I can choose one in seven ways, okay? 7C2 is making a pair, choosing two out of seven. How do you choose two out of seven? It is seven into six upon two into one, which is gonna be 21. You can actually form 21 pairs. I'll show you the pairs in a while. 7C3. Is going to be 765 upon 3 to 1, which is 35. Selecting 3. Now come here. 7C4. What is 7C4? As good as 7C3, which is 35. Why is 7C3 equal to 7C4? NCR is NCN minus R. It's like this. Selecting 3 people is as good as not selecting 4 people. That's why. What is going to be 7C5 in that case? As good as 7C2 because selecting 5 is not selecting 2. Okay, 21. 7C6 will be selecting 6 is as good as not selecting 1, which is 7. And 7C7 is got to be, so sorry for that, 1 again. Because 7C7 is as good as 7C0. Are we clear? This is precisely the combination table of 7. Okay, you can see 7C0 to 7C7. Combination table of seven. Two, three things that you learn here. Number one, it is symmetric. Okay, look at the numbers: 35, 21, 7, 1, 35, 21, 7, 1. Okay, it's valid only in odd numbers because in even numbers you'll not have a center number. I mean, you'll have a center number. In odd, you don't have a center number. You can just divide it this way. It's symmetric. Number one is symmetric. Number two, if you add them up, let's add quickly: seven plus one, eight; eight plus twenty-one, twenty-nine; twenty-nine and thirty-five. How much? 20 and 35, 64. 64 here, 64 there gives you 128. Yes. Okay. 128 is special number. What is 128? 2 raised to 7. So you can always say NC0 to NCN is going to be 2 raised to N. So if I added for 7, the addition came out to 128. If I have a 6, the addition will be 64. If I have a 5, the addition will be 32. If I have a 4, the addition will be 16. Okay, number 1. The summation of these will be a power of 2. Always. Okay, there are reasons behind. Let's not dig into the reasons right now. Not required as such. They are conceptual reasons. Okay. Uh, fair? This is okay? Okay. Where all can you use this combination table? Wherever the sample space is 2 raised to something. Can you tell me where sample space is 2 raised to something? Can you give me an example? Sample space, if you have a sample space, sample space is all possibilities. Let's say I give you an example. Let's say I toss seven coins. What is going to be the sample space? Two to seven. Because see, when I have seven coins, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, every coin can have head, tail, head, tail, head, tail as the outcome. 
which means the total sample is 2 raised to 7. So you can use combination table to solve problems on coins. Okay? How? Let's take a problem. Look. 7 coins are tossed simultaneously. Okay? 7 coins are tossed simultaneously. Sub so question 1. Find the total outcomes. Find total outcomes. Sub so question 2. How many outcomes will have? How many outcomes will have? Sub sub question. Exactly <coughs> three tails. Exactly five heads. At least four tails. At the most two heads. Let's look at all these questions one by one, okay? So seven coins are tossed simultaneously. You want these outcomes, okay? At least four tails, at most two heads, exactly three tails, and exactly five heads, okay? Whenever you see a coin question, you'll have five questions to it definitely. So it's a five marker. Probability, if you have a probability on this, just divide by 128 in each answer. Doesn't make a lot of difference anyway, okay? So you have probability, you will just total sample is 128, right? Keep dividing by 128, okay? Start, let's just start this. These five questions will not take you more than 10 seconds to solve. I'm talking all five together. I'm not talking per head, okay? Literally 10 seconds, okay? Not exaggerating, however. All right, total outcomes 128. That's fine. Exactly three tails. Now, it's your choice. You can treat this table a head table or a tail table. What is the question? Exactly three tails. 7C3 is the answer. 35. That's it. 35. Okay. Exactly three tails. 35. Next question. Exactly five heads. I told you, you can choose as a tail table or a head table. I chose it now as a head table. Five heads. 7C5, 21. At least four tails. A very nice question again. At least four tails. Be smart also at the same time. At least four means what? Four plus five plus six plus seven, right? Which means half of it, right? Which means 64. 64. Perfect. Yeah, that's how you be smart sometimes. All right? Yeah, 64. At most two tails. At most two tails is maximum of two tails. So 0, 1, and 2. What is the addition of 0, 1, 2? 29. That's the answer. That's it. I told you. It'll take exactly 10 seconds, five questions. All right? So you can treat that table, a head table or a tail table, whatever you want. When you see a coin question, okay, don't make the table entirely. Just keep in your head that you're going to use combination table of this particular number. The number will be what? The number of coins. At least four tails is four, five, six, seven. So half of it. Are we clear? Let's move ahead then. Okay. Where else can you use a combination table? Another question. In how many ways can you invite? In how many ways can you invite? Ten friends to a party. Ten friends to a party. such that at least one of them is invited at least one of them is invited beautiful question again very important 